welcome to another School of the Week, which this week takes us north of the border, namely Livingston in Scotland, not a million miles away from Edinburgh. This is a brand new school and we'll be getting the lowdown in just a minute, but before all that, let's take a look at what's in this week's show. Well, Jenny, I'll be getting humiliated and test the teacher. I'm going to be made a fool of and beat the goalie. And I'll be getting all romantic with my dinner date, Nicola. But first, let's take a look at Livingston. Livingston is one of Scotland's five new towns and with a population of around 40,000, it's the largest in West Lothian. And just in case you don't know where Livingston is, it's about here. At the heart of the new town is the original village of Livingston, which dates back to the Middle Ages. Construction on the new town started in 1962, and like many other Scottish towns, Livingston has attracted Japanese electronics firms like NEC and Mitsubishi. And there's absolutely masses to do here, as well as the usual cinemas and shopping. There's a skate park, a BMX track, a leisure centre, an ice rink and a brilliant model racing car track. And the school of the week this week is brand spanking new, and it is... I've forgotten it's been so long. Only kidding, it's St Margaret's Academy! St Margaret's was amalgamated from four local schools and it really is the kind of place that makes you green with envy. It cost a staggering £13 million to construct and equip and they put every penny into good use. Facilities here include a television studio, two music labs, a floodlit all-weather astroturf pitch, a competition-sized swimming pool and a science lab with acid-proof carpets. Well, I don't know about you, but I can't wait. Anyway, Derek, who's my kid guide this week? Thanks for asking, Jenny. It's the pop mongers Mark McGowan, who's in the third year here at St Margaret's. Mark likes astrophysics, painting by numbers, and CD-ROM. Not off. Now, as you all well know, it's not normal for me to be lost for words, but in this particular instance, I am. St Margaret's Academy, it's superb. It doesn't even feel like school. It's like a big posh office block or a nice shopping centre. That's why I like it so much. Don't tell me, you're the kid guide. Yeah. Mark, Mark. pleased to meet you. All right, hey, nice Benny. one. Congratulations, fancy getting here. Yeah. It's superb, do you like it? Yeah, it's great. Really? Yeah, it's pretty good. It, it feels quite new, how old is it? It's six months old. And it seems very posh to me. Yeah. How much money was spent on it? We spent 13 million pounds. 13 million pounds, wow. Well, it's certainly noticed a difference. And uh, what's this here? Well, these are mosaics by, done by the six feet of New schools right. in Livingston. Right. You have to mind the cameraman, he pushes yeah. people out of the way, you know what I mean? Okay, now you've also got TV studios? Yep, we've yeah. got TV studios, swimming pool, floodlit astroturf. Floodlit? Full size football pitch. I mean, Massive games hall. Oh, I'll tell you what, there's a lot of envious people out there. And I know for a fact you also have this system where you use a credit yep. card, which is very posh. So just Instead of paying for our lunch with cash, yep. you pay for it with a credit, uh, swipe card system. Do you now? Go what on. you do is, you put this card in the machine, mm -hmm. swipe it through, it tells you how much you've got, what, your name. Yeah, and if, if you, you want, want to put more money in, yeah, you put it put in it there in, and it goes on your swipe card. It again. And you pay for your lunch with your card. Yeah. Great then, mine's going to be a big lunch today. Thanks, Mark. Hi, my name's Daniel and I'm in third year. What I really hate about school is the way the teachers always come out with phrases like, when I was a lad. And now let's hand over to Mark. Very funny, Jenny. Well, here we are in the art department. Most art departments are software-free zones, mm -hmm. but this art department's different. So we're mixing software yes, with we're creativity? we're mixing computers with art, okay. which is unusual. Right, which is the first computer? Well, this is Jenny, and she's using the Macintosh Quadra 840, which is the most powerful computer we've got in the school. You said that so well. <laughs> OK, Jennifer, so what are you working on? I'm designing graphics for packaging to appeal to women, and I'm basically adding lettering to my design, and then I end up with final printouts right, like let's that. Let's have a look at the printouts here then. Look at that, and you've got different versions. Oh, very nice. Appeals to me, and I'm a girl. All right. <laughs> Next, we've got. We've got Brooke here, who's using the computer to um, design interpretations for a nursery rhyme. All right. What nursery rhyme is it, Brooke? Um, Mary had a little lamb. Of course it is. <laughs> You'll have to explain yourself. Well, I've just printed out I've just printed out patterns and pictures and stuck them onto the picture. All oh, right, there's the lamb, right? I've spotted it. And last but not least, this is Pat and Paul who are using the computer to design a Sea World picture. Right, let's have a look then. So, what are you doing, Botleys? Oh, we're just uh, zoomed in, and 
here to put finer details on the teeth, so it looks better. Right, yes, yeah, so you can get right in there, can't you? Nice yeah. one. All these computers, brand new studio, blah, blah, blah. I've got to say, Mark. I know, we're spoiled. Hi, my name's Claire and I'm in third year. And what I really hate about our school is the school bell. It sounds like a microwave oven when the door opens. Goodness, I'm pooped. How far was that there, Mark? About 100 yards. Is that all? Oh dear, do tell. Well, in our education department, we're very lucky because we've got downhill skiing, cross country skiing. You show us. You're spoiled at this school. It's brilliant. Go on. We've got uh, hill walking and, of course, mountain biking. Ah, right. I bet you're a real professional at that, uh, aren't you, not Mark? Not bad, but there's another two lads that are much better than me. Ah, right. Uh, I suppose that's Ian and John, yeah? Yeah. Hello, guys. I thought you were going to skid in then and show off. It's not allowed, no. no, why not? It's not to do with the environment. Because when you skid, your back wheel stops in motion and tears up the ground behind you and the roots come out of the ground and tear up the plants below you. Right, so that's something you learn in the programme. Yeah, so it's not learn. just about learning to no, ride a bike then? Okay. there's a big factor. What, what other things do you learn, Ian? There's a lot of maintenance involved. We get taught about looking after our gears, our brakes, our chain as mm -hmm. well. And after, really, after every time we've been out on a bike, we've got to clean it thoroughly right. to get all the just junk out of the wheels so and stuff. So it's like caring for your for your bike yeah. and like giving it an all-round MOT in a way. Uh, in a way right. Yeah. And what about your gears? That always confuses me. Yeah, it's it's very hard, but you have to get the right gear to go up the hill easier for uh -huh. going up hills, and they're very dangerous. Yeah. Because when if, if you've got your gear in a high gear, which is very hard for flat surfaces and you, yeah. go, you go up a hill and you push down very hard right. then your chain can snap. Well you seem very well informed, look I've got to go off places to go, people to see and all that, I just want to know how to stop properly please. Left brake first. Lee. Left brake first, cheers. Right then, come on Mark, got loads to do, keep up, woo! Oh this atrium is so showbiz, I just had to run down these stairs like this, showbiz, showbiz, showbiz. It's time for a test for the teacher and the teacher this week is Mr Hughes. Uh, can I call you Eddie? Yes, that's fine. Oh, great. You hate being called Eddie, though, don't you? I do. Now, what's this about sandwich making, Eddie? A uh, little part-time job. Mm -hmm. And you do it in class, don't you? Oh, no. Yeah, you're lying, you are. Um, OK, you've got to get seven out of ten, otherwise you're going to have to do a forfeit. On your marks, get set, go. Who wrote the Jungle Book? Uh, Barbara Cartman. Um, what is Helen Daniel's real name? Pass. Oh. What is Sonic the Hedgehog's fox friend called? Uh, Mario. Wrong. What animals are on the front of Blur's Park Life album? Lions. Wrong. Who plays Mr Bean? Ah, <gasps> oh, pass. Oh! <laughs> what is the name of the computer game which features an earthworm? Chucky Egg. Wrong. What group sung about Cotton Eye Joe? Pass. Which city is Biker Grove set in? Newcastle. Correct. <laughs> what character did Mark Little used to play in Neighbours? Um, don't know. Wrong. Name the police station in the bill. I don't know. Oh, I'm, I'm crying. I'm coming, Mr. Hughes. you only got one out of ten. You're a bit of a back of growth fan, though, aren't you? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got that answer right anyway. Um, but unfortunately, um, I've got to tell you, you're going to have to do a forfeit. We're going to catch up with you later. Can't mm -hmm. wait to find out what he's got to do. It's like aliens in here, isn't it? That up there. <laughs> okay, now it's time for Pop the Question, and this week Mark is popping the question. Who's the lucky girl? Joanne Dean. Okay, and um, how did you meet her? Well, there were two separate schools before we came here, and she went to St. Our Ladies Academy, and I went to St. Mary's Academy. Right. And that's how we met. Right, okay. Now, why'd you like her? She's got a great personality. All oh, right, she's also right in there. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. Hello, miss. I'm sorry to disturb you, um, Mark. Uh, is there a... What's her name? Joanne Dean. Joanne Dean in the room. Is there? Could, Joanne? Is that, this is Joanne. Hi. Um, Mark's got a little question for you. If you just want to stay there, Mark. What's your question? Joanne, will you go to me? <gasps> yes. Yes! Oh, look! Oh, dear. This is a bit affectionate, isn't it? Well, I'll tell you what. Let's just... Um, what's going to happen is you're going to go on a lunch date to the Deer Park Golf and Country um, Club where you're going to have a bit of lunch, you're going to do a bit of 10-pin bowling, have a quick snog if you like. And um, just so we got it on record, there's your camera, OK? So we can see all that goes on. No. All right. Not, not what did you say? Not all. Not all. What's he like? You're dead, are you dead surprised? Uh, yeah. You look it. All right, big round of applause and we'll find out what happens later. <laughs> Go! 
Now this week's School of the Week food review is a bit different because normally we look at the school menu and what's going on in the canteen but we've got a bit of a difference this time because we're using the Home Economics Department and we've asked everybody in the school to come up with a menu that they'd like to see in their school canteen. It's a bit exotic to say the least. Now first of all, Nicola, you won a competition didn't you? Yes. Okay, and what was it all about? Well we had to make a two course meal for our ideal dinner date. Okay, and who was your ideal dinner date? It was David Dixon, but unfortunately because of his busy schedule he wasn't able to manage it. Oh, what a shame. Well, it just so happens that uh, David Dixon's actually come along, believe it or not, Nicola. <laughs> 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 for weeks to give you that but oh, anyway just before you sit down and have your dinner date we're going to work you a bit harder david because you've got to review all this food first oh, and sample right. it all right. all right so first of all we've got kelly Good here one. kelly and ewan what, what have you made well for a starter we made pita pockets and then for our main course we made chicken goulash with a side salad right okay do you want to have a go first oh. Thank you. <laughs> right, I'll try this one here. Should I take out life insurance or is it going to be good? <laughs> right, here we go. Mm. Well, what do you think? Not bad. Right, not Quite bad. Quite good, that's yeah. Right. Any hot yeah. tips, Kelly? Um, just stay calm in the kitchen, that's all. Right, okay. Next. Okay, you then. What did you make? We had, for a starter, French onion soup, followed by right, noodle. Right, Go on, followed, on, sorry. Followed by meatballs, noodles and tomato sauce and a side salad. Day. Well, the soup's gorgeous, the noodles are going to be oh, cold. They're, That's why you're having not, problems. I can't get them up. Oh, here we go. Go for it, David. Mm, you're not bad. Yeah, I think it's a bit fussy, do you? I'm, well, I think I'm, it looks lovely, you. A little bit more spice. A little, a little bit more. Oh, you like hot stuff. Okay. Absolutely. Last but not least, go on, Nikki. Tell us what you made. We've got a cheesy garlic bread, a chicken and an orange sauce with Mexican rice, and okay. peanut and raisin chocolate fudge. We've got a lot right. to get through. I think I'm I'll having go chicken. For the, I'm having the chocolate. I'm having the chicken. All right. Any hot tips? Because you look like you're going to be a professional cook. Presentations, everything. Presentation. Yeah. Well, it looks nice. That's what about, great. Is it? That's great. What you about like? the bread here? All right. It's garlic, here we go. Oh, I can't have that. I've got to do a show tonight. Have you? <laughs> I'll oh. kill everybody. Right, okay. Mmm, that's it's great. lovely, the cheese and the spring onions. Absolutely yeah. gorgeous, all right. That's lovely. I just want to come round here, David, a minute. All right, I'm coming round. So, um, so bossy, aren't I? You yeah. are. Just with your mouth full, but, um, mm. can I just say, what's the overall consensus, then? I'd have to say, do I have to pick one to win, or... No, uh, well, do I... Is what? it just... What do I have to do? A bit unfair, really, isn't it? It is, absolutely. Well, if this one's a bit spicy, I'd love that. Yeah. That was lovely as well. Okay. But I have to say, this one's my favourite only because I'm a bit of a sweet tooth. But this and could it's be your sweet. most favourite of all, couldn't it? Well, I hopefully. I think it's about time you sat down to your dinner date. But I think I should. If it's going to be truly romantic, I think we have to turn the lights down a bit. Oh, uh, absolutely. Tom. Nice one. Well, it's not true. Really you have to get rid of everybody else, and they'll be truly romantic. All right, then. come on, let's go, guys. Yeah, we've got All right, see ya. Yeah. And now, time for a little teaser. What's the longest word in the English dictionary? Answer after the break. Just before the break, I set you a little teaser. What's the longest word in the English dictionary? And the answer is smiles, because there's a mile between the first and the last letter. Now, we've already looked at mountain biking in outdoor education, but there's another aspect called PSD. What's that, Liam? Personal and social development. OK, and it, what's it there for? What's it to develop? Well, it prepares you for life outside of school, such as 
like job seeking skills, mm -hmm. things like that. And your attitude in general in real yeah. life. Okay, now one of the particular aspects is first aid, so what kind of things do you do? Well, learn the basics and how to cope if like, there's a crash or any situation like burns. Now we're looking at a specific demonstration today, what is it? Yeah, it's a demonstration of a road accident. Mm -hmm. We've just got to see how to cope with the casualties. Okay, fantastic. Now there are three specific things you should do first and foremost. What are yeah, they? Yeah, assess the situation. Okay. Assess don't panic basically. Yeah, don't Take panic. a deep breath and look at what's going on. Yeah, then you've got to make safe. So just like stop cars coming if it's a minibus crash. Otherwise people that have gone to attend the casualties yeah. are going to end up being casualties themselves. And last but not least? Um, carry out the emergency aid. Okay, well I'm going to speak to some of the girls now who are doing that. First of all, Kerry, what's happened here? Well, um, she's been hit off her bike and she's unconscious but she's got a pulse and she's breathing. Right, so what have you got to do? Well, I've had to put her in the recovery position. And okay, do you want to quickly explain how to do that? Right, okay. Right, you put the nearest arm to you up like that mm -hmm. and then you put the furthest away on her cheek and hold it there. And you get her furthest away leg and make sure it's quite far up and then just roll it over. Okay, now why have you specifically put in that position? What's the point? Well, in case she vomits or something so she doesn't choke on it. Right, okay, fine. Well, best of luck with that casualty there. And inside the bus there's even more going on. Anne-Marie, what's happened here? Yeah, well, I've turned off the engine and on a check and he's breathing in his air passage. Right, okay. And how's it looking? So it's going to be alright. <laughs> <laughs> so you wait for an ambulance now? Yeah. Right, okay. And last but not least, Brooke over here. What's happened with this casualty? Well, um, she's broken her leg. And first thing I had to do was feel down her legs to see um, where the brake was, and it was in her right leg. And then you pad the middle of her leg to for the uh, so the pressure f so the pressure points aren't um, under strain. Mm -hmm. And then you bandage your feet together so that the legs are kept together. And then you put another bandage up here. What's that for? Um, it's just to keep the legs together um, so that the brake isn't moved that much. Okay, and that's all until the ambulance arrives. Yeah. Right. Well, talking of which, <laughs> if Liam wants to come back. Hello Liam. Hello. Um, this has all been pretty significant to you, because what do you want to be? Yeah, I want to be a paramedic when I'm older, so it's helped me quite a lot. Really? Set me on the right track. Do you think so? Yeah, and I think this sort of thing should be compulsory in every school, because mm -hmm. even the recovery position can save thousands of lives. Mm -hmm. So even if you're not intending on doing something like that at the end of school, it's sort of like, it's something that in the present you, you can use your experiences yeah. to full advantage. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. Now, what happens when you're 18? Well, when you're 18, you can go on to do it certain emergency aid courses right. that can set you on a proper track to become like a paramedic or a nurse. Right, so it could be you here arriving now, Liam. Yeah. Paramedic. Best of luck. Thanks. I can't believe it, you know, in a perfect school like this one, there are pupils that have still got something to grouch about. You don't know how lucky you are, John. What's your grouch? Spot lunch showers. Oh, right. Well, I don't understand. It's when they split up half the school. Half goes in early lunch and half goes in late lunch. Okay, why is that? Like it's stop queues, stop big queues. And, and there's not enough room not in enough here. Room. So do you find that annoying? Yeah, because if you're working in your classroom on a normal lunch, there's people running around outside on an air lunch, mm -hmm. and you can't see your friends if you're split up too. So it's basically a big distraction and a yeah. big inconvenience. Yeah. Okay, well I'm with you on that one, John, and I think it's time for another grouch. Now that's Lisa's lesson, but she's here because she's got to tell us a grouch. What is it? Our grouch is the narrow corridors. We want to know why a new school was built with such narrow corridors. This has resulted in a one-way system, which means we have to go around the school just one way. And we have a stupid rule, you must keep our, your bag on your shoulder. It's really annoying because you bang into people and you're shoved and pushed about. Right. Well, it just so happens that the rector is here, Mr Gavin, who's going to defend himself, I hope. Well, I can understand that the children who have been used Sorry. to the old building would find it quite a change because the old building had big, wide, stone, nasty, drafty <laughs> corridors. These ones are quite small, but they are built to the specifications laid down by the Scottish office, and the architects had to stick to those. Hey, what have you got to we say, just yeah? think it's really unfair that when we're late for a lesson, our teachers moan at us, and it's not our fault, it's due to the one-way system. Yes, well, you know, Maria, life is never perfect. And now it's time for... Meet the Collins! Let's meet the challengers for today from St Margaret's Academy, Claire. Who are you team captain of? The girls football team. Feeling confident? Yeah. Great. Oh. <laughs> okay, Mark, bit of a heartthrob here. <laughs> what trials have you done? Newcastle, Chelsea and Celtic. Whoa, professional. And Daniel, who do you play for? Manchester United. Feeling confident? Yeah. Now, who is that star goalie? 
It is Henry Smith, goalie of the heart of Midlothian Football Club. Easy for me to say. Now, how long have you been playing with them, Henry? Uh, 14 years, Jenny. Now, the heart of Midlothian is actually a paving stone in Edinburgh, isn't it? That's correct. You have to spit on it, don't you? Uh, yes, you do, but uh, I wouldn't recommend it to the kids. OK, now, are you feeling confident? I'm very confident, yeah. Lots of competition, you know. Yeah, look uh, look up to it and uh, let's get on with it. All right, then. That's Best great. of luck. Thank you. Wee OK, now our challengers have the total of six penalties to get past our superstar goalie. Best of luck, guys. On your marks, get set, goalie, go! Go on, Daniel, and there he takes it, and it's straight in for Daniel! Well done, he's only played for the under-13s, and he's got it past Henry already. And that's another one for him. <laughs> oh, well saved there by Henry, about time two, really. He's got two goals in so far, our three. Go on, you can do it, Claire. Oh, close. Go on then, Mark. Mark's a bit of a superstar. Yes, there you go. Four goals already. Oh, congratulations. Come here. That's a bit of a record. Claire, quick. You got the total out of four goals past that guy. Four out of six. Well done. Um, Henry, how many years did you say you've been playing for the Heart of Midlothian? 14 years, Jenny. Could have fooled me. <laughs> now. Earlier on in Pop the Question, the gutsy Mark, I have to say you're very brave Mark, mm -hmm. asked out the rather gorgeous Joanne, who said yes very eagerly. Now, uh, they went for a hot date. How was the bowling? It was good. Mm -hmm. How was the company? Fine. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to take you off individually and find out what you really think about each other. Now, Mark, when you asked Joanne out, she seemed really chuffed and eagerly said yes. Were you surprised? No, I wasn't really surprised. So you're pretty confident? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did, you, did you know that she liked you? I did, I felt she did. Alright, okay. What was the date like? That was good. What did you do? Just played bowls and talked. Yeah, what did you talk about? Anything. Anything and everything? <laughs> you yep. said you like a girl to make you laugh, so did she make you laugh? No, she did sometimes. Uh, Is there a future in this relationship then, if there's one at all? I don't know. You don't know, you're a bit nah. unsure now. Mm -hmm. Oh dear, let's see what Joanne thinks. Well, if it was up to me, there would be a me and Mark. There would be a... There would be. There would be. Right, OK. So, I mean, has this all just come out because of the date and everything? No, I liked him before. Oh, right. OK. Now, did you expect him to come up to you and ask you out eventually? No way. No way. So it was quite a shock. It was. Yeah. And there was a particular reason for that, because wasn't it your best friend or something? Uh -huh, my best friend set us up. <laughs> right, OK. Nice one. So, um, do you think he's going to uh, ask you out and you're going to go out soon? I don't know. I don't think so. Oh, no. Look, fingers crossed. Think positive. Mr Hughes, I'm coming to get you. Mr Hughes got the total of one out of ten. Do you remember in Test the Teacher? Well, now it's time for me to tell him what his forfeit is. They love Mr the Teachers, you know. They absolutely love Mr Eddie. Eddie. Hello, Eddie. Oh, you all right? Yes. Now, if you remember earlier on, uh, how much did you get again out of ten? Um, I think it was about one. Oh dear, so you do know what that means, don't you? Uh, yes. So I think it's about time I told you about your forfeit, Mr uh, Hughes. Yes. Um, in this bag here, oops, is um, a Dutch girl's outfit. <laughs> and um, including lipstick. And what, and what we want you to do is to dress up as a Dutch girl and then you're going to have a little rave for us all, right? And that's some boogie, is that OK? Oh, yes. Yeah. Great, we'll catch up with you later. Big round of applause, Mr Hughes! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, by special arrangement only exclusive to St Margaret's Academy, will you welcome Mr Eddie Dutch Hughes! <laughs> What a sport, that dress really suits him. And David Dixon and Nicola are still having that romantic meal. It's all going on in there. But sadly, it's the end of the show this week. But do join me next week when I'll be in Andover. But in the meantime, I'm going back for some more fun. Bye.
in association with United Artists Communication Scotland.